Hi everyone, it's gonna be a quick one this week. I really just want to give a very kind of quick update and also try and touch on um, what it was that I tried to record a couple of weeks ago. So I tried to re-record the last video about two or three weeks back and um, turned out my microphone was broken so I was left with no audio. Uh, and I want to sort of try to rehash some of the thoughts that I was having around that time um, around uh, spirituality and the world we're in at the moment and how I've been feeling about spirituality and um, my role in the community and so on and my own spiritual practice. Kind of in light of just everything that's going on the world right now in light of Covid and just how that's kind of made me feel but this is also um, just some of the ways that I've been feeling about my spiritual practice in the last several years like I'd say in the last five years or so. The whole time that I lived in Edinburgh so from late 2015 to late 2019 I was aware that I was going through a, some sort of spiritual slump and I addressed this on the channel I talked about it I worked on getting out of that slump and to you know a large degree I was successful I think I, I started to address or to at least realize um, what needed to be uh, addressed in order to get out of that slump and reinvigorate my spiritual practice and that's very much still something that I'm actively working on but I, I realized very recently that um, a lot of the kind of uncertainty that I felt around my spiritual practice and the lack of motivation has actually been caught up in the extreme levels of uh, volatility that we're facing in the world today. I have started to realise the extent to which we really are in an age of unprecedented volatility. I mean we have obviously gone through, you know, as a species, we've gone through so many massive upheavals, you know, we've gone through world wars and all sorts of crises um, across the globe. There have been really terrible things that have happened to people. But I, there is something a little bit different, I think, about what our generation is currently facing. Um, specifically, I think, with the environmental crisis, I think that, I have realised, is really the backbone of a lot of the kind of uncertainties and um, and lack of motivation, like I say, that I have started to feel towards um, a lot of the things in my life that I do think are important and that maybe in the past that I was um, a lot more focused on and that I was a lot more willing to place as kind of the central elements in my life and to think of as being the most important things in my life. So things like spirituality, art, um, you know, all, all kinds of different art, including uh, writing and fiction and, you know, writing non-fiction and so on, um, just philosophical ideas, theological ideas, relationships with other people, these were the things that I decided and gradually realised over my you know, during my 20s were the most important things to me in my life. These were the things that I wanted to focus on, that I at least, I personally valued the most and, um, on, and, and in some cases were the things that I felt I was kind of most talented at, most skilled at, I should say, that I had spent my life kind of cultivating certain talents for. Um, and then I think I was always aware of the problems of kind of social injustice and the environmental crisis. It has been something that I've, it's it's not, it's not that I had a sudden realisation that all was not okay in the world. I very definitely grew up in a household that was mindful of um, the massive social injustices um, across the world, including in my own country. And my family was also very aware of climate change from a very, very early stage. My father is a geologist. Um, he specialises in uh, glacial geology. And so he is, you know, very well versed in climate change. It's exactly, exactly what the study of glacial uh, geology is. It's the study of massive shifts in climate um, in historic times. Um, so there has been uh, a recognition of climate change, of global warming uh, since um, well, I would say in his field, at least since the 70s or 80s, and, you know, it, it goes back um, earlier than that as well. But they were aware at that time that we were headed towards a tra trajectory of, um, you know, massive warming and massive rises in sea levels and so on. Um, so it was not that I grew up in an environment where I was not aware of these problems, that I was not aware of these things, but I think nothing felt as urgent 
as it does now, as I was growing up. And I think I was um, fairly well willing to let experts and other people um, deal with those problems. Um, I think I trusted more, maybe, uh, especially at a young age. I trusted more in my government, maybe. I trusted more just that other activists and other people who were qualified in these things were actually going to be able to fix the problems. Um, once I hit my adolescence, uh, I definitely lost my trust in the government. Um, I became more active in protests and so on. Um, I was very much looking forward to being able to vote and so on. A lot of that, though, I, I started to feel really disillusioned with as I became older. By the time I hit voting age, I was already starting to feel that, you know, my vote wasn't going to really make a change. You know, I continued to vote and I continued to kind of go to protests and so on, but I started to have this feeling um, of just having a lack of agency and a lack of um, of really any kind of control over the situations that I would have liked to be able to improve. And so I went into a, into a phase of apathy and I kind of was still able to separate politics and the environment and the environment and so on from my spiritual practice, from my art, from everything in my in my daily life. In my head they were still totally separated and totally segmented and um, I was starting to feel a little bit of, of kind of connection between my spiritual practice and especially with the environmental crisis. It was starting to feel like they, okay, they probably have something to do with each other um, because I was developing a spiritual practice that was very much rooted in reverence of nature and so on. And it, it started to feel a little bit like, okay, I can't really ignore um, the link here. But I think it's really only been in the last five years that I started to get to a point where there are times when, you know, having a spiritual practice, thinking about spirituality, you know, working on art and creative expression, just starts to feel a little bit beside the point, and it starts to feel um, as though it's lacking in meaning, uh, because there are, in my mind, you know, there are bigger problems. There are real um, and and very urgent problems that we are facing in the world. Uh, and doing all of those things that I am used to doing and I'm used to spending my time on is not going to do anything to change them. There might have been a time when I was younger when I might have had an idealised notion that, you know, oh well, if everyone in the world became a pantheist, if we all became pagans, if we all became nature revering, then, you know, we would have a change in ideology and we would stop um, this extractivist mentality, we would stop trying to pillage the earth and assume assuming that we can kind of continue with this. A model of infinite growth, infinite economic growth, and just an infinite sort of um, extraction of resources from the earth. That you know, if we switched into this kind of pagan pantheistic ideology, that 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 switch would come with it. Um, that that is all very well, and I think it's true. But it de definitely started to feel from about 2015 onwards that that it was all a little bit too late for that. That we were already in the moment of crisis in terms of the environment. Um, that we're already at that point of no return. And it's much too late to kind of wait for people to uh, change their mentality, to change their ideology in this sort of slow burning, long scale kind of way that a, that a spiritual practice might bring about. Um, it, it just suddenly became very clear that what we need and urgently need is action right now from the top down and not so much from the bottom up. And once I kind of had that realisation that this more than anything what was what was what was holding me back from feeling like my spiritual practice was as meaningful as it kind of felt to me back in sort of 2012, um, I started to realise as well that there is a certain co kind of cognitive dissonance in um, revering nature, in revering um, the earth and uh, existence and uh, you know everything uh, in reality, while at the same time uh, holding space for the fact that there are such terrible things happening in the world, um, that we are inflicting um, really such uh, pain and such devastation on other humans, on other animals, on the, pla on the planet in loads of different ways. Um, and whether that is through uh, problems such as uh, uh, police brutality um, against black people, whether it's through um, just the sort of exacerbation of poverty and, and the sort of widening gap between the rich and the poor uh, due to our capitalist um, ideology and so on. There are so many different ways in which um, the way that we have been living has been causing harm. And 
it's kind of has become increasingly difficult for me to really just set that aside and instead to just celebrate. Uh, to celebrate without just getting completely lost in um, in the pain and in the horror in the face of, of really just the destruction that we are causing um, ourselves and, and the other species who are unfortunate enough to be trying to live alongside us on this planet. So all of this sounds a bit bleak and don't worry this isn't where I'm dropping anchor but um, because it was important for me to realise that this, there was this sort of cognitive dissonance happening for me I thought that it might be um, a useful kind of exercise for some of you maybe to think about this and you know maybe some of you are having a similar problem um, maybe some of you are also uh, either conscious or unconscious of the fact that um, you know, there is a huge amount of turmoil in the world right now and um, we're really just facing unprecedented change, unprecedented uncertainty and it can be difficult to kind of hold on to feeling like there is meaning to be found in other places, um, like we have permission to kind of continue um, with other uh, endeavours and to kind of continue enjoying life um, and uh, celebrating life without being constantly trying to solve these problems. Um, but the conclusion I'm drawing is that, um, first of all, I've been saying for a long time to myself that I want to find ways to contribute to solving the problems. I want to come up with more concrete ways than I have so far. Um, I, I, I'm not satisfied with the amount that I have been contributing to all of the kind of major issues that we're facing and I want to come up with better ways to address that and I have been meaning to do that once I finish the PhD in particular. I said I was going to try, try and focus on that in 2020 and I, I do intend uh, to some degree figuring out what I can do. I mean we're in another lockdown here in Ireland so you know things are limited but it, I can certainly be thinking about it and making plans. But on the other hand I think that I, I really need to move towards um, finding again that permission in myself to set aside the kind of problem solving part of myself and allow myself to celebrate, allow myself to enjoy, allow myself to feel reverence and awe um, because otherwise you know why are we even trying to save things, why are we even trying to make sure that um, the world is a better place for people to live in, um, you know life is about more than just existing and surviving, which is exactly what all of these movements are about. This is exactly um, exactly why it's so important for us to try and, and improve um, our society, to try to um, to halt uh, and slow down global warming, um, so that future generations and other people um, outside of our own communities and everybody across our society can do more than just exist, can do more than struggle. Um, that they can actually uh, live and enjoy and um, sort of experience fully um, what it is to be human. Um, so I think realising this is going to be important for me going forward in reminding myself that it's it's allowed, uh, it's okay, it's okay to, for me maybe, to focus my life on things that are not so wrapped up in solving the big problems and the big political problems, the big environmental problems of our times, um, or at the moment the big health problems, you know, I'm not qualified to do any of those things. So paganism might not be the answer to those problems, it might not be a kind of a panacea to the world's ills, uh, but I still think that there has to be some value to it. There is a reason that we as a community have felt drawn to these kind of practices, have felt drawn to recognising the world in this way, to celebrating in this way and connecting in this way and I do think that there is value in that. I will always believe in the value of art and um, self-expression, communal expression and so on and uh, spirituality in my opinion is very much a part of all of that. To me it is a form of art in the sense that it is a kind of expression of our um, our experience of life, it is, is an expression of our self-identity and um, our understanding of the world and so on. It's kind of a, a working out of um, the, the situation that we find ourselves in and our ideas about how that should be, how that could be and, and so on. Um, I think that we are multifaceted as humans and as I say um, I think if we get too caught up in constantly focusing on the negatives 
and on the huge problems that, that we're facing in the world, we are missing out on a huge part of what it is um, to be human and, and to experience life to its fullest. It's a huge privilege to be able to think about things like spirituality, to be able to find the time and the resources to enjoy and create things like art in all its various forms. Um, it is a huge privilege and um, that's something that I'm kind of always bearing in mind these days a lot as well, that the very fact that I feel comfortable enough in my environment um, that I have all of the kind of more fundamental needs met, um, that means that I have the kind of mental capacity, uh, physical capacity and emotional capacity to, um, to explore uh, things like self-expression, expression, expression um, of my understanding of the world around me and so on. Um, but the fact that we are driven to do that, the fact that we have an impulse to do that, um, it really does speak to the fact that, you know, as I say, um, I think that these things are important. I think that we are enriched by the arts, by spirituality, by um, thinking abstractly about things, by wondering about our place in the universe, by thinking about our relationship with other people and with the world around us. Um, we are undoubtedly enriched by that and enriched by beautiful things and by celebration and experiencing wonder and awe. And if anything, I think when we have the capacity in our lives to be able to do that, I think that we should. As I said in my last video, I actually found that when I was, you know, in the middle of a mental health crisis, I personally didn't find my spiritual practice, my spirituality to be um, something that I really fell back on. But I think under, under situations of less emergency, but more kind of underlying concern and underlying kind of anxiety, um, I think something like a spiritual practice it really is immensely helpful. I, I think it helps to remind us that um, good things can continue, that we can continue to live our lives in the best way that we can, um, even if we are uh, enduring very difficult circumstances. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. Just very quickly, I just wanna say that I have submitted my PhD that has finally been done. I think it was uh, nearly two weeks ago now, about a week and a half ago. I submitted my uh, thesis. So um, many of you might not be familiar with the process, uh, but now I go into the examination process. So now I'm waiting to hear from my examiners. I have two examiners, an internal examiner who is a person who is uh, you know, a lecturer in my own department, and then I'll have an external examiner from another institution, from another university in the UK. And the two of them will be individually uh, reading and examining my thesis. They'll come together to discuss their thoughts. And then um, there will be a further sort of examination process with me where I, and um, they call it, I'll defend my thesis, also called a viva, or some people pronounce it viva, depending on your Latin pronunciation. And um, that will essentially just be an opportunity for them to ask me any questions um, that they might have to defend any kind of issues that they might have with the thesis, uh, for me to kind of give them a statement and just walk them through, um, you know, the, the thesis, my thoughts on it, my process, and um, what I think the major contributions have been and so on. And then based off the back of that, they will be recommending what, what, whatever further action needs to be taken in order for me to kind of fulfill everything and actually get my PhD. So more than likely this will involve some form of corrections. It's almost always people will have some level of corrections to do on their um, on their thesis after examination and that might be minor, it might be major or somewhere in between. So that's all going to be happening hopefully within the next kind of month or so and then I'll kind of know what needs to be done in order for me to be completely finished and actually be conferred with my doctorate. And at that point, once I actually graduate, I can actually start calling myself a doctor, which is all really exciting. So there are still things, there are still hurdles, there are still steps to be taken. It's not all kind of over now, um, but the bulk of the work uh, is done. Like the thesis is in and um, that's, you know, the bulk of the work in, in the process. So this means that I am going to have an increasing amount of headspace and energy to work on other projects. I have found though that um, 
it's slow. I have been totally exhausted over the past week and a half, or really over the past month. Um, I'm really drained of energy and it's only in the last couple of days that I've really started to feel like I'm coming back to myself gradually. So I had hoped to sort of throw myself back into everything and maybe take a break later down the line once I've actually finished everything. But um, it's a bit slower than I had hoped. So that's why there haven't been any videos and why I haven't really kind of got going with everything else that I want to get moving on. There are going to be things coming pretty soon. I want to start doing spiritual mentoring. So I want to start uh, meeting you um, one on one if that's something that any of you are interested in. Um, I'd love to go back to doing the kind of it's kind of some of the work that I did with tarot in the past but I'm going to have a go at doing it um, without tarot so I'll be talking about that more in the future if you're interested to hear about this um, as like one of the first people to hear about this once I get this process underway like once I actually start taking clients um, then I would recommend that you sign up to my newsletter if you haven't it'll be down in the down bar and um, you can find a link to sign up to that if you haven't already um, because my plan is really to just uh, roll this out for my newsletter subscribers initially and um, and yeah any opportunities and, and so on I will be kind of available through that newsletter um, I'll probably offer some level of discount uh, initially and so on and so forth um, while I sort of get the ball rolling with that and I have other ideas in the mix as well going forward so if you are interested in kind of further content other than the free content that I will be providing more of uh, going forward, I'll also be, provide, be providing uh, paid content going forward in various different ways. And if that is something that you're interested in, you know, I will be talking about it again on the channel. Like I say, I will be talking about it in the newsletter. And yeah, uh, I mean, if you don't want to sign up to the newsletter, you can rest assured that I will definitely eventually be talking about all of this on the channel as well. But like I say, that will be kind of my first, the first place that I announce anything will be through that newsletter. I haven't been sending newsletters for a long time, not since COVID pr pretty much. Um, but I, that's one of the many things that I'm planning on picking back up where I left off in the very near future. Uh, I'm definitely going to write a, no a November newsletter. So I have been doing them every month. Um, there is a sign in option to maybe get more than one newsletter a month if you're interested in getting weekly updates. That's not something I ever actually started doing. I just wanted to have the option because I was aware of having gotten people's names and email addresses under the understanding that I would be sending a monthly newsletter and I wanted if I decided to send more frequent updates that um you know that you all had actually uh, signed up for that. As always I'm always very curious to hear any of your thoughts and uh, questions and answers to any of the questions that I have posed down in the comments. Um, I'm always really interested to see the discussion that's generated down there and um, thank you so much for watching, for being here and um, for bearing with me while I kind of pull myself together a bit. It's uh, definitely a little bit of a strange time. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm living in a strange kind of limbo uh, right now between one big thing and another, uh, between the PhD and you know, um, what comes next. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna take me a little while to really kind of get the ball rolling um, on the next big thing or the next big things in my life. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm really, really looking forward to creating more content, talking to you more, um, creating more videos and, uh, and so on. So yeah, thanks so much as always for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will talk to you again soon.